Good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us. Let's humbly bow down and collectively raise our kundalini and put ourselves into bandhan. We'll say the three great mantras. Om Tvameva Sakshat Shri Mahalakshmi Maha Saraswati Maha Kali Trigunatmika Kundalini Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha Om Tvame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nimala Devi Namu Namaha Om Tvame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasra Swamini Moksha Pradaini Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha We'll take one mantra to Sri Ganesha. Om Tvame Sakshat Sri Ganesha Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Sri Nimala Devi Namu Namaha So this morning we're going to spend a little bit of time on on the heart chakra um, just with some affirmations and um, giving ourselves some vibrations if if that's what we want to do and um, yes so we'll just start off with um, placing the right hand on left heart chakra and we'll say some affirmations Shramataji, by your grace, I am the pure spirit. Please forgive me for any mistakes I have made knowingly or unknowingly against my spirit. 
Shumaraji, by your grace, I am the instrument of mother's love. And now you can place your left hand on right heart chakra. Shamadaji, by your grace, please make me fearless. Please forgive me for any mistakes I've made knowingly or unknowingly against this centre. Shamadaji, you are the responsibility in me. Take the right hand and rest it on centre heart as we take the mantra to Sri Dagamata Jagadamba Sakshat. Om Twameva Sakshat Sri Dagamata Jagadamba Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nima Devi Namo Namaha Shri please forgive me for all the mistakes I have made knowingly or unknowingly against this centre. Keeping our right hand on centre heart, we'll say Jagadamba 12 times. Jagadamba, Jagadamba, Jagadamba. Jagadamba 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 Just sit quietly for a few minutes. So we've listened to this talk on more than one occasion. Um, it's from 1981 and it's How to Open Your Heart. Without seeing him, without knowing him, without knowing his bounties, without getting realization, it is very difficult. But today that is not the case. But still you have to have 
no fear in your mind. Trust. You trust yourself and trust others. First of all, try to trust yourself. If you have made mistakes, you have to say, yes, I have made mistakes, all right. So what? Trust yourself that you can correct yourself also. Trusting doesn't mean by blind ego trip. It does not mean that. Trust means that, yes, I can correct myself. I can improve. I can do better. Some people think that if you trust yourself, then you should never confess anything that you have done wrong. That you should never say that it was wrong and I can correct. This is a wrong idea. You have to trust yourself by saying that, yes, I have done mistakes, I have been doing wrong, I have been faltering, but I can correct. I have that strength within me. I can rise above all these things. I have that thing within me which I can use to my advantage. Trust yourself. Trust that you are realized. Trust that God loves you, that He has chosen you to be His instrument. Love yourself. You are unique, no doubt. As it is human beings, every individual is an unique person. But after realization, you are definitely a unique person. It never means ego trip. One has to use discretion about understanding. It never means ego trip. If you cannot correct yourself, you are not master of yourself. Yes, you are not perfect. You are unique, but you are not perfect. You have to perfect yourself. These words can be very confusing. When I say you are unique, immediately you think you are perfect. These are two words, unique and perfect. Somebody can be unique, but he can have imperfections. So you have to perfect yourself. And trust in yourself that you can perfect yourself through your Kundalini awakening, clearing your chakras, by understanding yourself you can perfect yourself. You have to perfect. I have so many ways, I tell you, directly, sometimes indirectly, through friends, somehow point out that this is the problem. You should think that I am within you. I am that part within you which is discretion. When you do not understand your own discretion, I try to give you the direction, by this way or that way. But people feel hurt, people feel bad, or some of them accept it. If you are seekers and if you are ascending, you are definitely unique, but especially blessed. And you have to pay special attention to yourself. You can't afford to play with yourself. So you have to discriminate between ego or ego trips, as they call it, and ascent. Ego trips bring you back with the worst hurting. It would be something like throwing you in the air and again you come back with a bump and break one of your necks or something like that. That's what ego trip is. But ascent is when you really rise above. Not only that you rise, but with you, you make others rise. In your ascent, you develop 
tremendous powers. The higher you ascend, the better it is. But not by understanding that I am perfect you can ascend, never so. There's a story of a teacher and his student. The teacher was very kind to the student when he would come and show him his creations. He was very kind to him. And every time he would say that, I have done this good and this is the thing that I have not been able to do, so will you please tell me how to correct it? And the teacher would say, yes, good, you better correct this part, then do this. Now one day the student came and said, now this is perfect. He said, you are no more student now. So he said, no more, you are not to come to me anymore. There was another student who was coming every day and correcting himself. And he told to his teacher that today I think I can teach others, but not yet perfect. He said, all right, you go and teach. The third one was a student who came and he was always trying to see what was the mistake and how he has to correct and how he worked very hard, very assiduous very hard working. And he came to his teacher one day and he said, Sir, I will not trouble you anymore now. He said, True, now you take my seat. That is what one has to understand. You ascend you will become humbler. It is just the other way around people understand. You see, when they ascend, they think we have achieved some special power. I don't know, suddenly self-certification starts, you see. I'm, I'm very good in spirituality, I'm very high up and all that. This self-certificate starts. And then it can reach such a point that suddenly you found you are on the earth again. This kind of thing is not the way it works out. Actually, the people who ascend, there are certain qualities that show on them. The first thing is your collectivity, how collective you are. With how many people you can carry on, at how many things you can laugh, That is one of the biggest qualities. The second quality is that how much you accept another's domination who cuts down your collectivity. You must have your personality separate from everyone. If you allow others to cut your personality, say, for example, there's a boss and you are the you are the employee and the boss is not realized soul and you are a realized soul. Or maybe both are realized souls. Take it like that. And uh, one of them is ascending. Then he becomes humbler, he becomes better, there are congenial relationships. But to a point, he will never compromise with his boss when it comes to his ascent, to his collectivity, to his giving, to his doing things for others. On that point he'll never have any domination because how much you feel responsible about yourself is the second point. How much you are responsible to be there, to be a self in the heart. 
any cell that fails fails the heart every cell in the heart has to be extremely sensitive and extremely obedient to the self to the spirit it has to activate work harder when there is need there are emergency at it enjoys the most and no impurity should be allowed the third point as i told you first is collectivity secondly your responsibility and third point is purity purity of your own heart first of all of your own heart about sincerity cunningness as i am saying this you will be realizing that all englishmen believe in the contrary nowadays not olden times but nowadays clean heart transparent open heart trust us talk to everyone we can open heart trust us why do you doubt if you do not doubt yourself you will not doubt us what are they going to take away from you what have you got nobody can take away your nose eyes nothing is all quite intact is all nicely glued down so nothing is going to disappear what are they going to hurt to a person who is a real eyes so if your heart is clean you can see the other person clearly through and through innocence is such a powerful thing such a powerful thing that even a glance is sufficient to kill a satan purity of heart actually when the heart becomes impure the impurity flows down to other places it is not the other way down it is from the heart many people believe that it's the body that becomes impure i think it is the heart which becomes really impure and then it starts to cling down to the body and then it is residual there it settles down there so have a clean open heart like a child's heart open heart what is there to be afraid of anyone what is there not to trust anyone what is there to be angry with anyone talk to everyone shake hands with everyone be nice to everyone on the way you find somebody in difficulty give him a hand if somebody cannot sit properly or has a problem you try to remove the problem if the person cannot stand give the place try to give from your clean heart if your heart is not clean it can never give now how do you clean the heart the subject which felicity wanted me to discuss is how to clean the there's no broom available for that in the supermarket there are no fairy liquids or anything to wash it down but there is a way allow your heart to be drenched in your mother's love just allow see how much she loves i trust you people laugh at me sometimes 
some of these saints who are supposed to be very great people. They, they can't understand how I trust you. They say that, oh, these are all lost traces. These are horrible people. How do you trust them? They are not sannyasis, they are not sadhus, they are nothing. They are ordinary people. For them, I mean, your value is nothing. They'll, if you go to them, they will make you stand on your head for three months. For three years they may hang you on a well. I don't know what they will do to test you. But I trusted you the day I saw you. The day you came to me, I trusted you. And I've worked on you from the very first day, knowing what you are, but I trust your spirit that it would shine. In the same way, trust, we laugh at others. I've seen Sahaja Yogis laugh at others, make fun of them when they come to you. Trust them. When you will trust them, you will respect them also. So you have to believe in yourself and enjoy the way gently you are sweeping into the current of your mother's love. Just enjoy that. Like a flower that falls into the
Mother, please come in my heart. Let me clean my heart so that you are there. Put your feet into my heart. Let your feet be worshipped in my heart. Let me not be in delusion. Take me away from illusions. Keep me in reality. Take away the sheen of superficiality. Let me enjoy your feet in my heart. Let me see your feet in my heart. And so the last verse of the three great mantras. Om Tvame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Moksha Pradaini Mataji Shri Nimala Devi Namo Namaha Thank you for being part of our program this morning. When you're ready, please bow down, raise your kundalini and put yourself into bandhan. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Jai Shri Mataji.